In this video, we're going to install FSSO in three simple steps. We have our Active Directory domain with three servers, the two domain controllers and one member server that's acting as our collector agent. And right now I'm on a server that's going to be our collector agent and I've named this collector. And the IP address here is 192.168.4.252. Our first domain controller is 4.254. And our second domain controller is 4.253. I've already downloaded the FSSO setup file. This is the file that you need to download from Fortinet if you're going to be doing the installation with the collector agent and the DC agents. Let's begin our installation. Accept the terms of the license agreement. Say next. I'm not changing the installation directory. My local credentials. And here I'm going to select advanced simply because it's a recommended installation method. And click next and then install. The collector agent has been installed. So when we click on finish, we're concluding the installation of the collector agent and kickstarting the DC agent installation. Now we install in the DC agents and we need to tell the DC agents where the collector is, is located. And this is the IP address of the collector as we remember listening on port 8002. Yes, this is our domain. Click next. If you've got any users whose logon events you don't want to monitor, you, this is where you get to select them. I don't want to monitor the administrator login events or the guest or even the Kerberos account. We click on next. So the collect agent has detected the two domain controllers and it's, it has selected those. And because we want to install this in the DC agent mode, we select the DC agent mode instead of the polling mode. And we click on next. And almost immediately, the DC agent installation on DC02 is complete. And when you click on yes, that server is going to be rebooted. Also, the same as DC01. Now, both these servers are busy rebooting now, but the installation process is complete. Let's just click on next. And what we want to do now is just go back and open the, open the FSSO application. And while the domain controllers are busy rebooting, let's consider the information that we have here. The collector agent talks to the FortiGate on port 8000, but talks to the DC agents on port 8002. This means that these ports have to be open and depending on which installation method you're following, just make sure that these um, are open. And during our installation process, we had those users that we wanted to exclude from being monitored, whose logon events that we want to exclude. If there's another user that you want to add to that list, this is where you would do it. And straight out of the box, Active Directory has plus minus 50 security groups. So if you want to filter which security groups will be um, monitored for login events, this is where you would do it. You would just define your groups. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. And here, this is where you monitor which domains uh, you're monitoring. Over here, you get to see which users are logged on and active on the network. And over here, we get to display the monitored domain controllers. And as we can see, the domain controllers have completed their reboot and they are back online talking to the collector agent. That means it's now time to configure the firewall. But before we do, we want to secure the communication between our collector agent and the firewall. Let's set a password. I'm happy with this. And while that is saving, let's navigate over to our firewall. And on the firewall, before we do the integration, let's actually have a look at the security policies and what we are capable of doing without the FSSO installation. Here I have my internet access policy and really the options that we have in terms of allowing who has internet access or who has access to what resources is limited to the IP addresses and address objects. When you click over here, we can see only the addresses and the address objects. And when you click on the user, we don't have much. Um, here we only have the local user groups and local users that are defined on the firewall. Now let's see how this changes when we do the FSSO integration. We navigate to security fabric, external connectors, and let's add our new um, external connector, which is going to be the FSSO agent on Windows AD. I'm gonna call this collector because we're integrating to the collector agent. And the IP address there is 192.168.4.2.5. Let's not forget that password apply and refresh and just as expected 
all the groups from Active Directory have been polled. Now the firewall knows about each and every single one of them. Now let's go back to our security policy. Now with our internet access policy, let's now add the users as a match condition for internet access. Because right now we're allowing everybody. We navigate now to user and we can see all the groups now visible um, in this view. And what we want to do here now is add the, the two groups. I'm going to add the group captains as well as sysadmins. And now this policy will allow internet access to anybody that belongs to the captains group as well as the system admins group. And to test this, let's go to our Windows PC. And on our domain PC, I'm going to log in as sysadmin1. And it looks like we have internet connection. We have access to Facebook. And now let's open YouTube. And it looks like everything is all good. Now let's change our security policy um, to exclude the systems admins. I'll close the browser and then just launch the browser again. And we can see now that um, our internet access is failing all around. But now let's try and see what happens. Uh, because this policy still allows the members of this group, let's log in, let's log in as one of the users in this group. Going to switch user to, to say Picard. Let's launch our browser and let's go to booking.com, YouTube, Facebook, and we can see that we have internet access. And if we navigate down to the firewall policy and look at the matching logs, and looking at the log, we can see our user matched to the source device, the uh, PC1 with its IP address, and the destinations, the websites that this user has been trying to access. And when we come back to the collector agent, when you click on show logon users, we can confirm that the user Picard has been logged on. If you click on it to select that, you'll see a little bit more detail. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.